bit of housekeeping, check out regularleaguemerch.com and buy some uh, beautiful hats and shirts and steins and some good-looking stuff. We'll uh, brainstorm some fresh stuff soon, Barnum. Yeah, yeah. Get something out there. Uh, and we'll also be, uh, yeah, leave us some feedback on YouTube especially. Thanks to all the comments that have come through on YouTube. And uh, you can find us on Threads, Instagram, and on uh, Facebook. Uh, I've shit-canned X, as stated previously. <laughs> and we'll get into... Anything else you want to talk about? Let's get into our review of the next four in line. Of what went wrong. I'm going to kick off with the Manly Seagulls who finished uh, 11th and rightfully so. Yeah, absolutely. You want to, uh, how do you want to do this? you want to get stuck into some stats? you want to Just tick off a couple of numbers to start yep. it off? Uh, 11 wins, one draw and 12 losses for the season. Three buys, which everybody else had, obviously, and a differential of positive six, <laughs> which is pretty much, you know, you run middle of the road, that's probably where you're going to be looking at those kind of numbers. Average 22.7 a game, points four and 22 against. So that gets you <laughs> your plus six at the back end. Um, last in penalties conceded. Wow. Only conceded 24 for... Or well, equal last, sorry, with the I think it was that Tigers. might tie into the other stat which I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, first in forty twenties, and it wasn't DCE; it was Croker who kicked well, four of them out of dummy DCE, half. But yeah. No, but he got four of them. DCE only got the two. Really? So, yeah, which okay. was a surprising one that I saw. Um, last in missed tackles, but also last in tackles made. Mm. So, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what that is. Whether they've just completely well, maybe discipline makes some sense there. Less piggybacks, less doubling down. Yeah, yeah. not having to turn around and make um, repeat a, sets. Yeah, against for I, off I, the I back didn't of see that stat, but when you run 11th, what does it actually mean? I don't know. But. I dare say there was a few tackles that weren't counted as missed tackles or tackles yeah. attempted. <laughs> and yeah. People just running away to score points, which might have been something there. Um, Jason Saab was their top try scorer with 14, which was 19th overall. Um, Garrick got plenty of points, kicked 60 odd goals, um, was up there with the points as well. It was around eighth, I think, overall for, for points scored for the, the Manly side. All their stats were pretty much middle of the road, man. Uh, there was just so many of them that were middle of the road. Hamoli Olakawatu was eighth in post contact meters, which is a tick towards him, and um, 28th for tackle bust. But he was their highest performer in the tackle bust margin with 88 of those. So, so you know, he had a pretty good season. Obviously, he was a bit cold at he, different um, he points. Had, well, but his stats are very impressive. Um, they stacked up well against across all spectrums. Yep. What that actually means? Uh, any any, well, any other key stats you want to touch on? We might. In our chat. Oh, apart from DCE with his kick meters, obviously third in kick meters on average. I think he was, I think he was second on average Who with that Moses and uh, Chad was actually really? with kick meters. Yeah, because they needed some help getting out of their very mm. end. I think, um, but uh, yeah, and yeah, nothing really else that really jumps out except for Jake Trebojevic gave away the most ruck infringements in the really? game <laughs> with twelve. I suppose when you make a squillion tackles, then you probably give away yeah. a few ruck infringements as well, but you know, he, he makes tackles. He doesn't actually have to make a lot of the time as well. <laughs> yeah. um, they're interesting on Manly because uh, well, they'll start for Olukawatu because on paper, statistically, he stacks up against just about any second row in the comp. Mm -hmm. But in actual impact across a season, does that reflect? Do you think, or is it? No, there was just some games where he, he was really on a tear, and, and yeah, just and like. He'd get two or three of those tries. a couple of tries. Game, try. break yeah, and that's how it felt. Tackles. Particularly after Origin, after he got half yeah, snubbed yeah. for Origin. I don't think he had a tremendous back end. No, he didn't. Um, so he's an interesting one. We sort of manly and, and the others. I'm, Lachlan Croker had a fantastic year. Well, when he gets them as well, when he yeah. gets to them. Um, but in, in the general manly season, when, when this has shown up when they are – Heavily driven by a salary crap controlled by four players. Yes, 100%. And what we get is six or seven players on the field that probably wouldn't make 12 other first grade teams. Yeah, correct. Yeah, I, don't, I won't name names. We'll um, get to them. I've, I've got a few names and, here. And then, but then, you, then when you lose your million dollar player, it leaves a big gap. 
Uh, but he wasn't even that effective when he was on no. the field at the start of the year, no, um, to I'll, be honest. I've got a thought for later as well. So, mm-hmm. But they do have good, great points of attack at their best. Um, they are a very good attacking team. They're a team I like to watch. They're actually yes, a boring correct. team, um, which is always a tick for me, mm-hmm. given we're in the entertainment business. Uh, and, and points of attack in DCE, the best um, back foot halfback in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, a, had almost a career year. Can't say it's a career because he has won comps. But as good a year as he's had in forever. Yep. Um, absolutely outstanding. And Tim's been enjoying his footy and could probably play to four. He could be the next Cameron Smith if he wants to. <laughs> he's played 300 now. Yep. He could probably do another four seasons in a dinner suit if he really wanted to. Uh, and if his body holds up. Uh, and then the combination with Croker, as you mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. um, gives him another point of attack. And he was fantastic. He had a breakout year. Um, you throw in Olukawatu. We'll get to our outside backs a bit later. But uh, any thoughts on any of them, first of all? You guys said Croker had a fantastic year. He was their leading tackler, who was 17th in the list with 858. Um, Jake was actually the highest average, though. He was averaging 40 tackles a game, which is not unusual for that bloke. It's, um, for mine, there was some just real uninspired efforts. There were some of these games where they just did not seem interested. Yeah. Um, and I'd say half of their losses were probably off the back of, you know, really poor efforts, which... you'd you didn't. You don't really ex- expect out of Manly that much, to be honest. They're generally always sort of having a go, but I, I thought probably four or five games that they lost this year, they just weren't interest, just weren't in for the game. I don't know what whether that comes back to a relationship with a coach or something where I know they're training or what happens there. But um, yeah, there was a couple of yeah, as I mentioned, games where they just did not seem interested at all. They're a very they're, interesting club in that I think they're almost the most politically driven club. In the comp. Yeah, the board does seem to have a and lot of players. managers in it. have a lot of power at that club. Yep. Uh, Two thirds of their roster are under a couple of player managers, and we've seen that with all the ones that have jumped to the Tigers, and mm-hmm. all the one. And there's no coincidence, six Tigers players have jumped ship in the last Come two back, years yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so you've got that aspect, and then you've got there's always intrigue at Borg level when between uh, whoever. Are the pens still there? Whoever's still yeah, there? Yeah, they they and, did and have and a the layers uh, in between the they fault, had some the fault injuries. factions and the yeah everything else. Um, but it, it feels like it, and I feel like that bleeds a lot into those uninspired performances at times because their very best is very good. And, and yes. back in the last three weeks, they put forty on teams. Yes, correct. In a, in a canter. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And beat uh, and beat. I didn't really beat any top teams, actually. <laughs> anyway, carry on. I the forward pack yeah. seems to have a split personality. Like, yeah. they can be dominant <laughs> again, which goes back to some of that stuff. But there was games there where they were completely dominant in the middle of the field, and then there was other games where they just were getting completely dominated, like mm. like nothing else. Like, look like one of the worst forward packs in the competition. Yeah. And, yeah, that really hurts your team. Um, they seem to have... Constant issues on both sides of the ball out wide, yeah. whether it be handling errors and the attack just completely falling apart out wide and defensive issues out there. Um, <laughs> there's a few of those guys, that, as you mentioned before, probably don't fit into a lot of other first-grade well, clubs. Um, a good time for me to crowbar any other point in that one of their starting edges would have been Tuolungi, who came over in mm-hmm. Tigers with a spruik. And didn't had like, three or four really good games and then just well, disappeared ended up into the ether. Great. Now he's gone to yeah. Parramatta. Yeah. They couldn't flick him fast enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Schuster. So when you got that combination one side, you're hamstrung. Yeah. It doesn't leave you a lot to work with, does it? No, that's right. And um, that's the way I was. I've cited a little bit of a different format this week with looking back at these teams. I went and had a look at maybe some standouts, some positives mm-hmm. and negatives in in their roster in the, at the last couple of weeks of the yeah. season. So um, obviously. The standouts in DCE, uh, Lachlan Croker and Ola Kawatu, at, when he's at his best, obviously they're the standouts in this team for this season. Um, Saab, Garrick, Cooler, all positives moving forward. A lot of pace, a lot of... I'll hmm. add Sipley in if you're talking last... Yeah, yeah. The last two months. When he was on the field, Sipley, yeah, 100%. Um, goes in that because I thought Yeah, yeah, his last, finish. what, five or six weeks was yeah. brilliant. Um, there's a borderline... Uh, blokes like Dean Madison, Jake Trebojevic was a bit borderline this mm. year. Um, obviously, injuries affected him a fair bit. And um, Ethan Bullimore was a bit, like, mm. had really good games. And then you throw in some of those games where he wasn't so great. And, and um, 
there's a couple of these plays, and it's interesting because you forget like we're burnt out trying to do this every week with the family and everything else. Yeah, um, yeah, hundred percent. Much we really love it, but someone like Jake Javoy, which has played a World Cup, yeah, he he hasn't had a he's been up since he's had February from uh, no when we no up since November last year with the World Cup. He's yep. Come back, has played a full Origin series, uh, two Origin. He didn't yeah, they, he wasn't around the first one. Yep, and dragged it this way. So I can forgive. I just feel like some of these players, I think even some of those Roosters players in the same boat. Even yeah, the team, 100%. You don't want to be like, right, I don't want to see you until... Yeah. I don't want to see you until 2024. Sorry, obviously, yeah. They, they, you know that when they come back, they're going to work hard, but... They had so. an average con- season compared to their previous ones, yeah. but you still expect them to probably be, be better next year. Yes, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. And um, there's some question, some serious question marks in this team, obviously. Tuolangi, as you said, is already gone. Um, ben Draboyevich, we've... <laughs> He did have a couple of good games at the back end of the year where they were going well, but obviously there's question marks around whether he becomes a first grader or not. Uh, Aaron Woods, I'm pretty sure he's going to. I think he's, he's gone, I think I he's think gone he's anyway. Be he's retired or, or is going to go to the you coaching know what? staff I, or something. But I wouldn't hate him coming back and being given the Tigers' um, average age is going to be like 19 <laughs> next year. I wouldn't hate him coming back and say a train and trial at the Tigers yeah, and being yeah. a. Do his yeah, ninety yeah. meters? Do his ten hit ups for ninety meters? Yeah, and like <laughs> just it's just another because the rest of them are anyway different story. But, but the biggest question marks are obviously t- uh, Turbo with his injuries. Um, no, it's obviously no knock on his skill, but they, <laughs> well, he's now, big out now, for the now year. Four years in a row where he's yeah. played thirty percent. If that, yeah. yeah, and like he almost won a Dally M off what thirteen games I think it was, mm-hmm. but. You need him for at least 13 games, obviously, don't you? <laughs> and he's, what, he played four or five this year? Yeah. And um, Schuster's the biggest question mark I think Manly have. Uh, they want to make him a back rower. I don't think he's got the um, he doesn't have the, work the attitude. You need to be a workhorse. Well, you need the attitude to start with. Exactly. <laughs> you need to want to do it to begin with. Yeah. And he just seems to be a bloke who wants to just, you know, throw the, the pretty passes to set set up tries or score him and yourself and do the, you know, the, the stuff that other people can't do. And, yeah, he does have a very high skill barrier, but his attitude is very questionable at the moment. So, Given he's on 800, maybe the best thing that can happen to him is go to Super League and just beat up some people for a bit or at least work it out or be yep. next to an old head or something. And they, and they need a, a rotation. Of their forwards, they, they really did have some problems once that bench rotation came in with yeah. the forward pack, so... That's another question mark for him moving into next year. So next year they've got Luke Brooks coming in. Great. Look, that's an, ex- an exciting – if you're a Manly fan, I think you rightfully should be okay with that. Um, some people won't be, but outside DC, I think it'd be fine. Yeah. Well, the, but this then, kind then of talk got, um, probably Tommy a couple Talau. of months down the road. Of course. But, yeah. And they've got Tommy Talao, Jackson Paulo, and, uh, <laughs> and Asitasi <laughs> James, who's a big body. Probably add some starch to the bench, but – the thing that caught me in the last month, the more I thought about it, the more I thought if I was Seabold, I would be aiming to try and have Cooler at one yeah. and Turbo and Garrick in the centres and then work the rest out, whether it's Tuapalutu, whether it's Vega, whether it's Saab. But I think that gives you an explosive, a genuinely explosive fullback. Yeah, you know, tons of pace. You can have the, the yeah. fastest 5'8 in the comp or someone in the conversation thereof. You know, DC, doesn't have, he's even more dinner suited up because he doesn't have to run at all. Uh, and Turbo can play, and Turbo can play first well. res- either yeah. first receiver or be popping off Luke Brooks or popping off, coming back up the inside off Croker. Like, yep. I would be looking at that. And that becomes a scary prospect if you keep Sip- if you get the fight up Sipley's and Paseca's and Lokoatu's on the field. That can well, be a dangerous Paseca's team. probably a bit of a question mark as well. Even well, he at his be, best, he's, he's fantastic, but he's never he, has, he hasn't uh, reached those as long as we've been doing this show. He has yeah. three games a year where he's the best forward row, best front row you've ever seen on the and weekend. Then, yeah, and then the next weekend, weekend he's not yeah. <laughs> by a long way. Yeah. Mm. So I, I'm semi excited to see how Manly go next year. I think they're a genuine chance of getting to the eight. The other yeah, loss, 100%. And, and you, well, anyone basically that didn't finish in the last sort of three are a definite chance of getting into the eight mm. next year. Will Flanagan leaving here have an impact? Is, it, is that exposing C? I would imagine so. Is there a concern there? I would, I would think so. Um, I feel like some of their mad scientist stuff they came up with through the year, which I loved. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's all DCE, but I feel like Flanagan had a bit of a... I think he's got a very good eye for young talent and yeah. a very good structure in defence. So we've seen that 
previously at Cronulla. And, um, yeah, I think they, they might. Um, it's been a bit of Manly's problem, actually, picking out those younger fellas mm. that are coming through for the last couple of years. So. It's funny that because now Scott Fulton's left. So <laughs> Anyway, but like I said, they, they get hamstrung by these player agents and we've seen them all jump ship as soon as they've got the Never chance. helps, yeah. Uh, but I think you, you've got a 20-try winger, you've got a bloke in... Uh, every team needs to have one of those wingers that if you make a line break... It's four points. Yeah. If you're going to be successful. And again, Saab you know, wasn't kept Saab. on the field for a big time no, in the no, field. So cool. had a cup, an injury or two he, as well. Yeah, so. so if all his downside he adds, he has so much tremendous upside. So maybe that's a question mark too around their strength and conditioning that they've got in the club yeah. because they did seem to have a consistent flow of injuries throughout. I know a lot of that comes down to bad luck, but I'm sure there's a lot to do with management as well because you see teams being able to cope with it like... Mm. Your Penrith and Brisbane, even the, like you look at Penrith, they had a pretty bad injury toll this year. Yeah, they had players so. coming in and out of club, but yeah, the depth is obviously another thing that's different there. So, any final words on Manly's season? No, nah, they finished pretty much where they probably de- they probably deserve to finish at the fraction lower. Actually, with some of They'd the efforts that they put in, and that was on the back of I would, I would go as far to say it's on the back of DCE and Croker. Yeah, and they're Croker. the two big standouts for mine. Yeah. Uh, and at the end of the day, everything I've said about those positive stuff, you don't you don't buy. We've seen it time and time again. You don't buy players from teams that finished last and improved here. So. Generally, not. No.